Welcome in, guys. This is Comic Book Food Chain. Uh, if you're just tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome. We got some big news, and of course, we got a big guest with us tonight. Uh, join with me. Let's go through the quick run through, right quick. We've got a uh, creator. Uh, Frank Gogol is in the house. Frank, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm a little blurry, but uh, glad to be here, obviously. No worries, no worries. All right, we got Mr. Frank, then the master collector, Mr. Aaron Yi. Hey, how's it going, everyone? What's up, what's up? And then, of course, the man, the myth, the legend joining us is Mr. Greg Horn. Greg, how's your week going? Oh, Greg, we can't hear you. We lost you, bud. No worries, man. So, guys, welcome in. We're going to get some uh, quick house cleaning things out of the way. Uh, Greg's going to play with the audio for a second. But, uh, again, comic book food chain in the house. We're going to give you perspective across the comic book food chain from the uh, creative aspect, retailer aspect, collecting aspects of all the goodies. Uh, but let's uh, let's talk about some subs. All right. So we did it. Finally. We made it to 800 subs. I believe it was uh, two hours ago. Yeah, and this this was a saga, right? Because we kept hitting it, and then we would lose someone, and it was like three days in a row of hitting it, losing someone, hitting it, losing a couple of people. And I don't know who it's it's obviously not anyone who's watching it now, but whoever was unsubbing, shame on you. Um, but we did it, we hit it, uh, and now we're gonna give away this uh, killer Justice League of America ten movie foil variant uh, for the uh, the Zack Snyder uh, Justice League movie. Uh, we will announce the winner of this next episode. Uh, so obviously be sure to tune into that. Um, and we're going to pick a winner from the comments on the posted video. So um, after the video is up tomorrow morning, uh, just be sure to go in there and, and, and drop a comment, show us a little love, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll pick somebody at random, and we'll get that bad boy in the mail. Uh, and we will next week be announcing what the 900 sub uh, giveaway is going to be. And we are still on our road to 1000 subs. So we can give away that beautiful Drew Zucker and David Boer signed Canto number one San Diego Comic-Con edition. That is on the next slide. There it is. Uh, so yeah, um, guys, keep sharing these, the links out to these episodes. Keep, if you haven't subbed, sub. Um, we, I want to give this away. Uh, this this is one of my favorite books. These are two of my favorite creators, two of my best friends in comics. Um, and I want to give this book a new home because I just lied and I hate Drew and I hate David and I want this book out of my fucking house. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, no, but for real, uh, if you haven't sub, sub, hit the little bell or, or whatever. Um, and if you've got a friend or friends or family or cousins, an enemy, whoever, share the link with them. Uh, let's, let's get this channel off the ground uh, in a big way. Let's give this book away. Uh, yeah. So guys, uh, again, if you haven't caught onto the theme here, uh, Frank and I have some really cool shit, uh, and we'd love to give it to you. So make sure to keep encouraging people, uh, to, to just hit the button, hit the bell. So, you know, when we're live, a couple quick shout outs from the chat, you got comics with Bueller in the house saying what's up to everyone. Uh, welcome in buddy. Who else? We got just subs. We're getting some new subs. I love it. Love it. I'm seeing some regulars, some Dan Berries in here. I even see a couple people from uh, Facebook. Uh, let's say, what's up to you, Jerry Carter? Uh, we also, who else do we have in house? Donald Ravito. Sorry if I mispronounced that. No worries. Who, who uh, else? Who I, saw, I saw yeah, Bird City folks. Dave Durr. Always a friend of the show, right? So, yeah, I saw Lauren here. Leftover Zaggy. Andrew Lehman. How's it going? Thank you for joining us tonight. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so we got um, we got Greg who's having an audio issue, but uh, let, let's. Uh, what else do we got going on today? So we got the sub stuff we're gonna do. We got the interview with Greg Horn. Um, if you guys are not familiar with his work, I mean, this guy goes uh, goes deep. He he's been around for a while now, um, and he's done some fantastic stuff. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we got some cool things. We are off to an awesome start. Love it. Love it. Let's, let's see if we can get it. Well, anyone who's just listening, you missed something. So keep, keep your eyes on the screen. Hey, dude. Anthony, can you hear me? We got you, buddy, loud and clear. Okay, the, the audio is a little choppy. I'm doing this off of a uh, website, not an app. So oh, okay. hopefully, I, hopefully I didn't screw up. I didn't, I didn't think this out very well. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're you're totally fine. Um, Sound good to me. Yeah, everything's good. All right, guys. So, uh, guys, with us again is Greg Horn. Greg, uh, your week, uh, I'm guessing, has been pretty crazy because you and I have been having some late non-conversations. Everything been going well with you? 
Yeah, everything's going good. You know, it's just the normal stress of uh, of being a comic book artist, I guess. <laughs> you know, go. deadline, deadlines, and uh, people wanting you to do things for them, and you yeah. having to say politely no or or maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, and see, that's what that's why you're here. We we don't know. You're you're gonna tell us. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, about you and and ask you some questions if you don't mind. Let's let's deep dive into this bad boy right meow. Uh, first off, I, let's get you a warm up question, okay? okay. Um, actually, man, this is this is gonna be. Let's let's make it nice and easy. Oh, and he's got the noodles. Yeah, I'll be eating the noodles for 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 the both of us. Everyone, everyone watching who's, who's a newcomer um, on our premiere episode, we uh, had is Aaron trying the noodles. Aaron, Aaron's eating the noodles. This is a, a tradition now. Uh, <laughs> for anyone who wasn't here the first episode, these are the Sam Yang spicy noodles. Hey, Anthony, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You can't. Okay. Sam Yang, please. I'm expecting to hear like screams and howls of pain. <laughs> we'll get there. What's going on? <laughs> See, I like spicy food, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I'm starting to feel the burn now. Yeah, it does okay, definitely. So, Aaron, up on what it, I'm going to so, need you to do is uh, I'm going to need you to sit there and just munch on those. And when it feels the when you feel the pain, just look directly at the camera so we can laugh at you while we talk to Greg. I, I already see him turning a shade of me. So. <laughs> oh, man. This seems sadistic somehow. It, it, yeah, well, your turn's coming back around. We're going to have you back on, and you're going to get this thing. Okay, so I'm going to hit you off with a lightweight question. We were all collectors in our last episode. A lot of people really responded well to it. Is uh, We showed off some things that were personal to us that we collect. You're an artist. You're in front of these things all day long. Um, but yeah. do you collect? And if you do, what are some of your favorite items you got? Um, I, I do collect... Um, uh, you know, I've been in comics for, uh, for a long time. I've, I've been collecting ever since the seventies and, um, um, I do, I, 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 there's something about silver age books that really appeal to me. Uh, are we all frozen? I'm not, uh, frozen. I'm not, I don't think I'm, no, 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 never mind. That was me. <laughs> keep, keep going. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I've got a lot of books from my own personal collection. And then at shows, I've been, I've been picking books up. Uh, here and there, I've got a really nice copy of um, of Amazing Spider-Man one. I believe it's the the second highest grade signed by Stan Lee. Wow! So that's that's my uh, that's my bad boy right there. And then Love other it. than that, I'm a, I've always been a big Avengers fan. I got a complete run of Avengers. Uh, most of them are wrecked. They're they're in bad shape because I used to read them all the time. But but I love them. You know, it's 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 a piece of nostalgia. Right on. And Frank's Frank's pretty proud of his uh, Fantastic Four run. Frank, you got that whole thing hammered in, right? Yep. And I got the the number one signed by Stan as well. Uh, it's behind those really cool Power Rangers. Covers. I can't see Frank. You can't see me. He's the top left corner. Yeah, it's the whole screen's black. Huh. Huh. Um, I think we're brought. Yeah, it's showing on our side. So just yeah. pretty, just envision a very. Oh God, I hate to give him a compliment. Attractive, Just being a well put handsome. together individual, handsome, <laughs> devilish. Okay, I just want Frank to know I'm not. Uh, I am not ignoring him. I just I can't see or hear him. Oh, okay. okay, you can hear me though. I can hear you, and I can hear Aaron. All so right, let's keep rolling. This is That's kind of weird. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so yeah, you get, you got the, a nice collection going there. All right, let's let's deep into this. Let's give you a little harder one here now. So, um, digital art. We we've talked about this before, and when you first came into the industry, you attacked it with digital art. And the time frame that you you know came in and started putting your work out there, a lot of people it was pen to paper or, or you know. Oh yeah. Is that what they called it? Pen to paper. Yeah, it was, or, or they would call it uh, traditional art. I, th I think the term traditional art came into effect after digital art came on the scene just to differentiate the two. Okay, so you came in and you're like, this is the way it's done, but this is the way <laughs> I want to do it. How were you received? <laughs> right. Um, it was it was a little hit and miss. You know, I was I was the first artist to bring uh this new type of digital art into the comics arena um a lot of people had trouble accepting it um i think we, we i had talked to you about this earlier in the early days and we're talking 1999 2000 
uh, I was actually getting pushback from some editors and art directors, not Marvel. Marvel, I think, I think the guys at Marvel immediately saw the potential of digital art and understood what I was doing. But um, with a lot of these uh, like art directors from ad agencies and uh, video game, video game uh, producers, they seem to have a hard time understanding it or accepting it or something. And I kind of found myself almost disguising the art for, for lack of a better term. But if, if you look at my early Electra and Emma Frost art, it's kind of difficult to tell whether it is digital or whether it is painted on paper. And that was, that was like one of the first things I had to deal with trying to, trying to get the, get the art accepted. So that brings up an interesting thing. Uh, if you guys have questions, jump in. But so did you try to like mimic brush strokes and stuff to make it look like what they're looking for? Exactly. Yeah. My, my background's airbrush art. When, when I was doing art traditional on paper, uh, my weapon of choice was the airbrush and there's technically no brush stroke in an airbrush painting, at least not one that you can see or detect. I mean, there is a stroke you're doing this with the airbrush but you don't actually see the texture of bristles going through the paper. So it's funny that you bring that up. Yes, when, when I would do the art, I would try to mimic brush strokes. Um, I would do a lot of mimicking of uh, pe uh, pencil line because okay. uh, back then I was drawing almost exclusively uh, digital. When I, fir when I first got the marble, I was, I was doing it exclusively digital. So I would mimic pencils. And then eventually I started just doing the art on paper and pencils and then scanning that, scanning that in and then painting over it. Right on. So did you see, did you feel that that was like the way of the future? So you were going to get into it now to be ahead of the curve? Was it preference? Was it economical? Um, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, I mean, when I started doing it, I, wa I wanted to do something that was um, technically complicated because you, you don't want to have a, you don't want, you don't want to have a lot of people that are you don't want to do a style that's kind of easy to ape you know what I mean yeah I kind of I don't know back then you know the the big artist was Jim Lee and it just seemed like he had uh, so many uh, copycats I don't know it just it always just left a bad taste in my mouth to think that this guy had invented this style and now all these other guys are copying him. I guess it's a compliment in a way, but at the sure. same time, it's, it's also, I don't know. It was just always weird to me. So when I was doing the digital art, I was just trying to come up with something that was really out of the box. I, I guess, I guess I would say it was more, uh, more of a creative endeavor than anything else. Right on. Right, and you're setting yourself apart. Yes, yeah, I was going to say, it's a stand out a bit different from what everyone's doing the same as. Like, you know, you got to make your mark in this community. Yeah. So, so speaking of making your mark, um, we've, again, touched on this subject before, but you are known for producing beautiful, beautiful women. Um, and, yes. and, and don't get me wrong, you, you've got a lot in your wheelhouse. <laughs> Anybody that just Googled your name and go through the full spectrum of art that you produce. You've you've touched in every category, but you seem to comprehend the the the, the woman physique. Um, it, it looks right, so people grasp on it and go, "Okay, that's a great corn cover." He draws women appropriately. I mean, inappropriately, appropriately, uh, as far as the builds and stuff. So, was that right. industry driven, or was that more you know just your preference? Um, I would say that when I first started working mainstream and we're, we're like I said we're talking around 1999 2000 I would say it was just it was my preference to draw women I found them to be more of a challenge artistically um, but then as time went on you know you don't want to get pigeonholed as the guy that does this specific art or that specific art so um, I, I started uh, working, you know, working more on improving my artwork on the male characters. And then that turned out to be a good, uh, a really good thing for me because, um, the, the female art is, it's a, it's a nice niche place to be for an artist, but 
at the same time, the male characters seem to be more popular. You know what I mean? Your Spider-Man, Batman, um, at the time, characters like Spawn. Um, they just seem to be more popular. I think that's evening out a little bit now. And, uh, you know, the, the male characters and the female characters seem to be getting closer in their popularity. But, uh, but back then, that's, that's kind of the way it was. Right on. Um, so you got a couple cool comments on here. I, I got to acknowledge this one. Apparently you're Elon Musk of the uh, digital comic book world because you got nearing Ooh. Nirvana saying Greg Horn is the Tesla of comic books. Wow. I am feeling special. I'm going to sleep well tonight. Thank you. And we got another one here. Got a question. Ye. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is from uh, Comics with Bueller. He has a question for you. Uh, does digital speed up the process of creating compared to traditional style? Okay, that, that's a really great question. Um, I find that digital art for me is faster than traditional, but you have way more options digitally. Like for instance, when you're painting on paper and let's say you're gonna, you're gonna make the background a certain color, you gotta pick a color and that's kind of it. Um, with digital, I can make the background blue. And if it's on a layer, I can go, oh, let's see what it looks like if I shift the colors this way. Let's see if I shift the colors this way. And you can end up taking more time doing the digital painting through this plethora of options. Um, so interesting. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's tough. You got to know when to say when and you know, when to say, yes, this painting is done, uh, because with digital, man, you can just, you can go on and on. Uh, but generally speaking, digital is faster. Um, in some respects, it is also a lot of digital artists are going to hate this, but in some respects it is easier, um, because a traditional artist needs to know how to mix colors. Then that artist, if he finds the perfect color, needs to know how to replicate that color again, or at least save the color. I used to put my paint in the refrigerator to, uh, to, to save yeah. it for another day of painting. Um, so so yeah, there, I, there are some certain aspects to traditional art that make it, make it more difficult. And I'm not saying that makes one better than the other. In fact, I prefer, if, if you said, hey, Greg, what art do you like? What, what art is appealing to you and you wanna hang up in your room? It's largely, uh, digital art. Yeah, I used so to. I'm not, uh, so I'm not. I'm, I'm sorry, Aaron. So I'm, oh, I'm not go. saying. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just. Uh, I'm just saying that I believe digital is is uh, easier, or at least faster. I shouldn't say easier, faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so real quick, uh, Frank, because uh, I don't know if we can still hear him yet. Um, um, Frank has a question. Uh, wants to know what's the favorite cover that you've done. What, what's your favorite cover? You just. If, off the top of your head, boom, that's the one I know, right? <laughs> oh, man, that's a tough question. Jeez. Um, I mean, it does it does change from, you know, year to year. Uh, for the longest time, my favorite cover was Electra 3, where she's got the size crossed in front of her, and there's a fire burning behind her. Cool. I just I, – I, that painting just had so much – uh, life to it. And also it was really important to my career because that was, that was a painting that kind of got me noticed by fans at Marvel. And then more recently, um, uh, man, I really, I really like the edge of Venomverse covers where, uh, where I, I, I painted a hybrid of spider Gwen and Venom and we were calling it Gwenum at the time. And just the body language on it with her hand all twisted backwards and I uh, do it changes, but, but if I was going to pick one right now, I would, I would say definitely that, that edge of Venomverse cover nice. is one of my favorites. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, let's get a quick mic check from Frank. Frank, can you, uh, give oh, me I a, can I can talk. I've been enjoying my retirement. <laughs> Any, anything from, uh, from Frank? Yeah. Still nothing. No. Nope. Okay. He, he's going to talk in a third person on the chat if he needs to chime in, but we can hear him. Uh, YouTube and Facebook viewers should be able to pick him up. Okay. Second class. Okay. Citizen cool. My own podcast. Second class. Second class. Citizen <laughs> <on the> podcast. <laughs> <Wow>. I like <laughs> it. All right. Let's keep on cruising. Um, we got a big announcements coming up, guys. We're going to break it up a little bit. I think we should probably. Sh we've been hinting at it all week. Greg's been hinting at it. Let's kind of hit it. Let's ask a couple more questions. We'll hit it in the middle and then we'll get back to questions. You guys good with that? 
Yeah, that sounds, yep, good. No, that sounds good. That's where I showed it by accident. Yeah, yeah uh, my bad. I'm here for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those oh, needles aren't that bad. Yeah, we we pixelated it a little bit. Okay, let's let's hit you with an easy one here. I got two easy questions. We're the food chain. Pizza, thick crust, thin crust, and toppings. What's your preference? Is this for me or Aaron? For you. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely go for the for the thick crust. You may say this is a sacrilege, but I don't care. Sometimes I go to Pizza Hut and I get that deep dish and I love it. Hell yeah. There, there I said it. Can we get this guy off. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and toppings, toppings, nothing. I just, I usually ask for extra cheese. Right on. All right. So thick crust, extra cheese. I dig it. And then uh, I got to, I got to hit you with the hot wing question. Are you a bone in or a bone out guy? Um, I am not really a, a, what you would call a connoisseur of spicy foods, but, um, What's going uh, on? my daughter's boyfriend, <laughs> she brought, he brought over some, some wings and I did try them. And, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I would prefer it with the bone. Okay. So, so bone you, got, in. You, got, you need, you need something to grab, you know, you gotta yep. be able to hold that sucker. So this explains why the, the noodles weren't, weren't able to make an appearance on your end, huh? <laughs> 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 Look, I've been I'm almost finished this week. That's all I'm gonna say. How are they treating you? Yeah, yeah. they're going through the whole thing. Yeah, yeah I you know. Let you let them cool I, I think I, I cooked it too early. I'll cook it a fresh one on the nutter show. You'll do two next time. Okay. All right. No, let's, uh, let's get this oh, slide up. So oh. This is what the guys were talking about right now. Is we got a uh, we use this for for a segment we call Drunko Vision. And uh, basically what we do is we pixelate it and people try to guess at what it is. Oops. So, so you, <laughs> he's smiling already. No. <laughs> so Gre Greg reached out to me guys and, and we've, we've done a couple of books together. And basically what happened was, is he said, I got an idea. Um, I want to do something special. Uh, and I don't want to talk about it. I want to make it exclusive for um, fans and followers. And so we put together uh, an additional piece of art uh, we're pretty proud of. Uh, what do you guys say? Do you guys want to let people spec on this for a while and then show the image, or do you want to just break it out now? No, I want to see in the comments since that's where I'm living these days. What people okay. think it is. So Frank says since he's living in the comments, Greg, and you can't, nobody can hear him. Um, he yeah. wants people to guess at it first before we before we show it. So here, here's your yeah. Yeah. make him suffer. I like it. All right, back to the questions. Um, let's see. Okay. So we played another game uh, a couple weeks back. We did a character mashup. I kind of gave you a heads up so you had time to think about it. But basically what I want you to do is I want you to think of your favorite power that a superhero has, your favorite personality that a super character has, and your favorite uniform uh, slash costume. And I want you to mash it into one person. So this is the epitome of, of <laughs> Greg Horn's perfect superhero. What, what do you got for us? Huh, okay, let me think about this. So we need a power, yes, a personality, yes, and a costume. You got it. Okay, power bar is very high. How about we go with Molecule Man? Okay, Molecule Man. There's, molecule there's your power because essentially he can do anything. He can turn this diet pib, which I'm very unhappy about, <laughs> into a real sugar pib. And then once it's in my body, I can turn it back in the diet. Just Interesting. think about that. So you want to be more so you best. could cheat at dieting. Okay. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Now, personality. Okay. Personality. I am, I am a natural jokester. Um, the, the, uh, when we're working in the warehouse, it is just a laugh riot. Uh, one time we were laughing so hard driving home from a convention that my eyes watered up and I literally had to stop driving because I could I couldn't see the road. So Ouch. I would want to have the personality of Spider-Man. Okay. I dig it. Peter Parker, joke, joke ripping Spider-Man. I dig it. I dig it. All right. And then what are you going out and to, to fight crime or to create problems? One or the other. Uh well, I do wear that Galactus hat at shows. <laughs> yeah, how about how about that? A guy that looks like Galactus cracking jokes on you while he rearranges your molecules. 
<laughs> what are those? Uh, what are those? Uh, those spoof kind of Marvel comics? They're like oof or something like that. Oh, uh, oh Brand Ash. Mark's gonna Mark, kill not me. Brand Ash. I'm forgetting the name. Amalgam Comics. No, it's it's the one Frank saying. Frank, say it again. Not Brand Ash. Not Brand Ash. That there you go. Yeah. Not not Brand Ash or not Brand Eck. I can't remember Ech. how you're saying like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, again, guys, if you're just tuning in, uh, make sure that you're subscribing. Follow Greg Horn at Greg Horn Art. That's his uh, his main page. He drops a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, again, comic book food chain. Subscribe. Uh, he ate all of the spicy noodles, and he's and not. Now his dog bread. is super upset. Yeah, uh, he's like chewing it, chewing the bone right now. <laughs> oh man, let's see. We got a couple guests here. Bueller says, "Is it a girl Smurf?" With any of the other Smurfs, preferably Brainy Smurf. <laughs> That's the best wrong um, answer. Yeah. Mm, That's a pretty good no. wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Greg, I'm surprised you're not wearing your minor league baseball hat. That's what I'm most <laughs> shocked about. Like, I mean, every time I've met you at a convention, you're always wearing that. That's why I wore mine. Yeah, you know what? It, that hat is kind of interesting. Think about this. If you think about people that you remember – most of them have really cool hair. You know what I mean? Think about it. Einstein, Prince, lots of people have good hair, right? So my yeah. hair, it's, eh, it's okay. It's nothing special. So I wear the hat and people remember me. He's the guy with the big T, big T on his hat. Hey, and it's not the Rangers. No, it's not the Rangers. It's um, Toledo Mudhens. It's a minor league team. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Next question for you. Um, have you ever thought about doing a creator creator owned project? Um, yes, I did a creator owned project back in 1999. This is just before I broke in at Marvel and uh, it was called judge and it was fully painted and I was still, uh, I was still developing my technique at that time. So it's very, uh, very experimental, um, not necessarily good. And uh, I wrote and drew it, and man, th the whole thing's painted. It's 177 pages over three issues. Uh, or I'm sorry, 100, yeah, 100. I think, it, yeah, it's around, it's around that many pages. It's uh, over three comic books, and it took me a year and a half to uh, finish this thing. So it was, it was quite, a, uh, quite a journey. Um, after I did this, I showed this, uh, the artwork to Joe Casada at, uh, Marvel and he just happened to be editor in chief at the time. And that's when I got hired on at Marvel based on that book. So I've wanted to revisit it over the past 20 years, but, um, with all the work that is just constantly coming in, it's really difficult for me to, uh, commit the time to do something like that, but it's really? definitely something I, I, I want to do. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, too, because you kind of – you sell books um, at greghornart.com. Um, right. So oh, hey, Anthony, I just I just did something silly. I didn't even tell people what the name of the book was. It was called Judge, J-U-D-G-E. Judge, okay. Judge. Um, okay, so go ahead. We've got to look that we got to look that one up because now I'm interested to see what you did on interiors. But uh, when, when you're looking to sell comics, you, you kind of want to put art out there that's you, but you also want to make it marketable so you can move comics. Um, yeah. So creator owns always interesting to me. We had uh, John Boy Meyer for our first interview on, and he oh, was cool. doing like a Dungeons and Dragons, like and not yeah nothing. I would he's like oh it's a dragon. Do you, do you guys remember Aaron and, and Frank? It was a dragon theme something or other. I want to say it was like fantasy based, and I don't remember exactly what. That's been like what two months ago. <laughs> this is like episode like six hundred at this point. Right? Episode, I would like. <laughs> I'd like to check that out, man. Dungeon Dragon. So, but it wasn't what you were expecting. You know, he just got done doing a Joker cover for us, and he does, you know, the Harley Quinn and the action and all this stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, I did this fantasy dragons or something. And I'm like, really? And But it's a creator owned, it's his own work, and it's what he wanted to do. It was kind of interesting. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that for, coming from him uh, with like what he's done before, too. So it was kind of surprising. That's too. awesome. Yeah. All right, I got I got a couple more questions for you. Let's talk. Um, I'm going to ask you one question about your team. We're going to do the cover reveal, and then we're going to talk a little bit about your signature story because that's super interesting. People are going to want to hear that. Um, if you guys, uh, so so great. You you obviously have a team you work with. Um, Bird City yes. Comics. I don't function without my team. 
what about your team? What are the characters you work with? Yeah, um, I've got a team of uh, stalwart warriors helping me. Um, we've got Mark in the warehouse. And um, what's interesting about Mark is he and I actually grew up in the same neighborhood, but we never knew each other. So, so we started, when he first joined me, we would start talking and he would tell me about this guy that he used to buy comics from at the swap shop. And I would go, wait a minute, I know that guy. And then um, I would tell him about a girl that I used to date and he would say, oh, I hated her. And it's like, it's like we lived this life together, but never knew each other for 30 years. And nice. then I just happened to meet him 200 miles from here at Megacon. And he joined me, and then it, it it turns out we've been traveling in the same circles all our lives. So, interesting. It's, uh, it's a match made in heaven. No doubt. <laughs> you 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 can tell you guys are uh, you you guys know each other. Like you said, you got that history because when I call, like the first five minutes of every business phone call we have, we screw around the whole time, and you and Mark <laughs> saying the craziest shit, and I'm like, okay, yes, this is Craig Horn. Check my call. Yeah, I got the right guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then we've got uh, we've got Nathan who monitors um, all my pages for me. Um, he puts out fires. He uh, uh, he'll post occasionally. He'll do posts for me. But most importantly, he will check the emails every day. And if somebody's got a problem, he makes sure we're aware of it and we get it taken care of. So so Mark is largely in charge of uh, getting stuff mailed out and uh, 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 and helping me help helping me do the promotions. And then Nathan is kind of like our uh, our catch all guy. He catches all the trouble. And then um, and then I've got a third guy. He doesn't come in as much as he used to, but uh, uh, Gary is a uh, is also a big help. He uh, he helped me start my group, um, my Facebook group. And um, he has also educated me on symbiotism you know what i mean by symbiotism yeah it was Venom. the uh, carnage the carnage cover we did he was the one that told you <laughs> carnage doesn't have a tongue yeah yes exactly so uh you let so, him out uh, of the yeah, shed G gary <laughs> is definitely my uh my venom educator it, it's good to know to have the people that know the what's up on specifics so you don't oh, make yeah. that uh because you, you know I've, I've learned this being in this industry Everybody's fantastic. Disclaimer. I love you all, but they are quick to correct you. <laughs> Actually, Ant. That's the truth. Actually. Okay, Frank's telling me something. What? <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> just just playing on you, you know? Oh, I wait, you. I hey, I forgot to mention one other guy. We also have Ed, and Ed also uh, monitors the pages for me, and he will occasionally uh, po make posts for me. But he likes to post a lot of terrible dad jokes. So the good dad jokes are mine. The bad dad jokes are Ed's. Okay. So if we don't like it, just say good one, Ed, sarcastically. Yes. And the good ones, yes. the LOS. There you, you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Guys. That makes so much more sense now. <laughs> so um, this cover, um, it is live, but we wanted to talk about it a little bit for. Oh, we lost him. Well, here we go. If he pops back in, we'll let him back in, I think. My show again. All right. <laughs> Do this. So tonight on Comic Book Food Chain, we're going to be interviewing Greg Horn. Everything Ant just did doesn't count. We're starting <laughs> over. <laughs> Frank, yes. I'm, trying, I'm just trying to catch up and get it out of my system, you know? <laughs> Frank, there's something wrong with you, but I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Wait, wait. He's going back. So we can show. Well, so we have it's good scene, back, guys. And then we can reveal at the same time. Okay. I can't see Anthony or Frank. But can you hear us? Can you hear them? Or you can only hear me now? I can only hear you, Aaron. Now you All right, Aaron, it's now. your show. I'm, I've been blackballed. Oh. I'll tell you what. I can All right. So, yeah, I guess uh, something's just you. Yeah, so I'm being instructed to go ahead and reveal the cover if you're ready. Okay, let's do this. All right, so Woo! we have it here. The Miles Morales Spider-Man 25, the Bird City exclusive shared with your awesome website, greathornart.com. Uh, right now on the Bird City website, there's 20 times signed copies and 30 unsigned copies. 
So if you just go to birdcd.com, uh, there's a, is it access code or? Is no, no, it's uh, oh, it, real quick. So what it is, guys, is we got a limited amount just for the viewers that are watching tonight. Greg Horn's got them at greghornart.com. BirdCityComics.com has got them. But this is the art. Make sure you head over and pick those up. We we made a limited amount available for tonight and then tomorrow the full launch, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ye let them know that I gave them all the goodies. Yep. Uh, so um, <laughs> and just let uh, the audience know about all the goodies, the, you know, the spiel about everything. Well said. It's mild <laughs> pork Alice. Okay, yeah, I still can't. I still can't. <laughs> okay. I still can't um, see or hear the guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he just went over with the audience, oh, and okay. they're gonna say, "Did that do anything?" I'm gonna try and uh, log out and then log back in. Yep. Okay. He's not gonna be able oh, wait, to see wait, wait. Anybody. Anthony, is that you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me okay, try this. Hold on, Frank. Can you yeah, hear a third voice? I can't see Frank. I'm telling you, I probably should have done this through an app. How's oh, that, Frank? Oh, uh, I don't think there is an app for this. Hey, there's Frank. Okay. Oh. You got the whole party now. All right. Finally. So my, my spiel, I just told him, Greg, that, that we, we made a limited amount of these available just for tonight. If you're viewing in, if you're part of uh, Greg's um, business page, he, he put it there. We shared it out. There is a small quantity available between him and I. Um and, and a couple other spots. Uh, and the full launch will be tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for everybody that misses on that small quantity. But we wanted to make sure you guys got some of these. As a thank you. Yeah, this is um, this is a, uh, what do you call it? It's kind of like a pre-sale of the pre-sale. Pre-sale of the pre-sale. Exclusive access. Well, Exclusive access. And, and Greg, you, you, you had the same results I did when we put out the Miles Morales 25 uh, trading card variant they'll yeah. sold out fast and then of course the you know the emails follow going oh i missed it do you guys have any more and the answer is well no we sold out so we we kind of yeah, divided cover, it into two launches yeah that cover did amazingly well so, so about that one would Great. you say that i've been asking for this for a while now ask asking for what this the, oh this the cover spider ham oh yeah yeah i mean this this is an idea <laughs> we had come up with in the past, uh, th this was, as, as most people know, this was originally a black cat cover with the Peter Parker version of Spider-Ham. And we had come up with an idea in the warehouse, which I'm not going to discuss here, but it was going to have Spider-Gwen and a different cover, a, cover uh, a different character other than Spider-Ham. Yep. And then you called me up and said, oh man, this would be, this would be a really cool cover with a with a Miles Morales spider ham and then it just the lights went on in my head and I said yes let's yep. do this so, so I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you came through with that so my, my wife is here she, she's got a comment says her eyes Greg it's stunning and she asked me before the show she goes does he intentionally make spider Gwen look just like me she would like to know wow <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> Am I in trouble, Anthony? Not at all. She she's walking around the house. She's like, "That looks like me," and I'm like, "Well, then I'm a lucky guy." <laughs> the right answer. Um, yes, that is the right answer, Anthony. You're gonna do well. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, guys, this is a, a book we made available. There's a limited quantity uh, at GregHornart.com, BirdCityComics.com. Uh, make sure you guys go pick those up. Um, and Greg's going to do something special with this book. Uh, Greg, one of my questions on here is the full signature story. So if anybody's familiar with Greg's uh, art and signatures, he typically does this super cool G swirly H uh, kind of all in one symbol. And he's right. got some backstory to this full signature. Yeah. Um, when I first started uh, going to conventions and selling selling my art i would sign my name you know like a normal person i guess you would say and then uh and then man it started getting really really crazy busy so um on the advice of a very famous artist who i'm not going to name he said that i should find a signature that looks good but is faster to do because he said eventually somebody's going to bring you a thousand comic books or something and you're gonna need to sign them in a, uh, a, a limited amount of time and you better be able to sign those suckers fast. 
So I came up with this signature, the swirly G and the H. Um, I like it. It kind of works as a as a branding image almost. You know, it's 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 like a signature and a symbol, like you described it at the same time. So I've been doing that signature for about, I guess, eleven years now, eleven or twelve years. So that has become my actual signature that I do for everyone. Um, one year I was at San Diego, and a guy comes up to me. And he says, hey, Greg, can you sign your full name on this book? So normally I would say no, but I looked around and there was not a not a big crowd. The, the show had just opened. So I said, all right, man, I'll do it for you. So I signed a couple of them with the full signature. The next day, my friend calls me up and he says, hey, man, that guy you did that signature for, it's already up on eBay. And I was like, what? Wow. OK, how much? You know, what's it going for? <laughs> So we go over there and of course it's going for like five times more. So all wow. the guys were kind of, all the guys were kind of mad and they're like, man, that guy, he did blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 no. He, he's found something that people like and give a crap about. So I have ever since been offering that, uh, that full signature as part of my sales. Um, at one point, uh, and, and I may still do this in the future, but I used to put a specialized full signature on one book and throw it up on eBay. And then we give it like a stupid name. Like, uh, uh, like one of my signatures was black and red. So I called it the blood of the martyrs. Like and then another one was blue and pink. So I called it the, uh, uh, cotton candy signature. We just had all the, all these different kinds of signatures and people really reacted to them in a good way, even though, it's kind of ridiculous, but now I've decided that uh, instead of just doing a one-off, since there's so many people interested in it, I just offer it as an uh, option on the drop-down menus on uh, all the new comics that we have available for sale. Right on. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Frank, you going to think about doing that anytime soon? There's a reason I do my initials right now. <laughs> <laughs> Too many to sign? Not yet, but that was advice that I got too when I first got started signing books uh, to just do something uh, straight quick. Mine's like it's one hand motion now. Right on. I like it. So, guys, if you're just tuning in again, we're joined by uh, Greg Horn. Uh, this is the new Miles Morales 25. We've kept this cover a secret. We launched the three book set a few weeks back. Uh, we are making these available tonight. So, head over to birdcitycomics.com, greghornart.com. We have limited quantities just for the viewers tonight and, and people that are really following what we're doing. And uh, it's it's been fun so far. So, uh, uh, Frank, this this one specifically with the spider Gwen and the spider ham, uh, were you enjoying doing this one? Because, I mean, that's got to be a cool one to paint, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a, 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 a lot of fun doing it. Um, I enjoy the textures on this piece. It's kind of hard to see on a, on a little screen like this. But um, Spider Ham is a stuffed animal. He's he's all furry, and I actually did that for a reason. When I sent in the original sketch, not this painting, but the one with Black Cat and uh, Spider Ham, uh, they wrote me back and they said they said, Greg, are you intending to have Spider Ham sitting on Black Cat's lap? And I was like, No, 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 no! I'm not doing that at all. It, it's a stuffed animal. And then I, I made sure that when I painted it, that I added all this fur onto him to make sure everybody understands this stuffed animal. And uh, they were cool with it. So I've done the same thing with this painting. Um, the tricky part, you know, is uh, is doing the separation of the colors to make sure that they, they look realistic. And then also yeah. with Spider Gwen herself, there is a there is a costume pattern on her okay. on her okay. arms just to just to add some visual interest. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, you can totally tell it's plush on on the the texture that nice. you put on the spider ham head. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, it looks good to me. Yeah, I definitely remember the the black cat release. Uh, you know, that was pretty epic, and you know, here I am with you launching this one. Right. This is fun. Yeah, that that yeah. black cat cover was epic. Well, that was uh that was the big reveal, guys. Hopefully, you guys are digging everything we're doing. Um, Greg, I've really enjoyed working with you, and I know we're going to be Absolutely. working more projects Likewise. down the road. Uh, hopefully I haven't been too much of a pain in the ass. No, not at all. Not at all, man. And everyone's going to come up with a good idea. <laughs> I love it. Well, I got another idea for us, so I'll hit you up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Um, my ears are open. I love it. I love it. Well, um, you guys have any other questions for Greg before we let him go, and then we wrap this bad boy up? 
I'm sure I could think of a ton, but I don't want to take up the man's good time. He's got covers to draw. Right? Yeah. All right. One last question. I'll do one. Okay. Are you excited about con stuff starting to open up mm -hmm. again? Or, and are you planning to attend anything within this year? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I've, I've got a lot of differing opinions on this. I've gotten quite comfortable at staying home. <laughs> um, I've gotten into my groove here. Um, but at the same time, you know, I really, I really revitalized my career at conventions. There was a time um, when I wasn't really being offered that much work back in the, uh, like around 2008, 2009. And um, I was able to kind of revitalize my career and do a reinvention of my art by going to conventions. So I've got quite a history with the conventions. Um, then, then there's also that desire to get out and see people, of course. Uh, then there's also the aspect of when you go to these shows, is it really going to be a full show? Are they going to limit yeah capacity are they going to limit uh how many people they'll allow to stand in a certain area it's just uh man it's really tough i will tell you i have signed up for one convention already it's a very small convention here locally in florida uh we're going to do uh sun coast uh late may and cool. you know we're going to use that kind of as a uh a litmus what's a better word for guinea pig litmus test Yes, litmus test. You know, all we're right. gonna go there. We're gonna set up all new stuff. Um, I got a, I got another book cover that's coming out right after this uh, Miles Morales. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, launch that one in about a week, and uh, th that'll be the first show where people can actually buy it in person. So you can, you so, can tell so Mark I'm, uh, I'm upset with him because he mentioned that but won't tell me what it is. I'm guessing you're not oh. going to either. So, <laughs> well, hey, good on him. I can yeah, tell he, him to keep all my secrets. Now I know. And and he will. So now you know, because I pushed him on it too. <laughs> oh, if he was going to tell anybody a secret, he would tell you. So if he won't tell you the secret, then nobody knows. See, you know, that's one to trust right there. <laughs> oh, and I also want to thank you because I've won a prize before off your website from the Easter egg hunt. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Awesome. That's, yeah. um... I, I hope I hope I revealed your name in a exciting, inventive way. Yeah. You uh, didn't blow something up. No cannons. <laughs> yeah, your giveaways are always fun too to watch. Like, yeah, they're, Take they're crazy. <laughs> See, if you do a firework every time, then people just get bored of it. So you gotta, you know, you gotta kind of. So save naming that. the GI Joe, that one was pretty good to you. <laughs> wait, wait, was, was that the one where I gave everybody? Who entered the raffle a GI Joe, and then I shot the GI Joes with airsoft guns. I think that's yep. <laughs> is that one? Yeah. Is that the one you won? No, no, no. I won the uh, no. I won an Easter egg hunt off your website where you had to find the find the prize, add it Ooh. to your car. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about a raffle. I'm doing my career all wrong, dude. Right? No, I don't want one of those raffles. <laughs> those are crazy. Yeah, I've entered. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's kind of interesting? Uh, I got to think of more creative ways to give stuff away now, now that Greg's up in the game, but we actually had some teenagers come to our door one day and, and just knock on the door and ring the doorbell. And they were, they had a competition between friends and they were doing like a trade up game. So they brought me something. They're like, Hey, this is kind of weird, but I have this item. Will you give me something cooler for it? Cause I'm trying to beat my friends and we're all running around the block. And I happen to have a Stormbreaker like prop from uh, Thor. And so I, and my son's been swinging and hitting me with it. And I'm like, this thing's kind of heavy. I'm like, I'd rather not have it. So I come walking with this ax and the ladies, this, this girl's like, uh, and I'm like, here, this should win it. <laughs> and she was super pumped. Wow. That's, that is interesting. There was actually a story about 15 years ago about a guy who traded until he got like, like a oh, yacht yeah, yeah. or like, like some expensive car, but he started with like a rubber band and he went to a guy and said, Hey, I got this rubber band. What will you trade me for that? Oh, I'll trade you a paperclip. Then he takes the paperclip and says, Hey, what do you trade me for this paperclip? And he just keeps going and going and going. And he ends up with like some fantastic. It was thing. a Lamborghini. Oh, geez. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. That's pretty cool. So, so the idea that they just came to your door and said, here, give me something for this. It's kind of. And she left with a prop storm breaker, full size ax. And uh, mm, I, th wow. I, th I hope she won. Because <laughs> She's currently in Arizona jail. 
<laughs> <laughs> it was foam. It was foam. I mean, it was still heavy, but it was foam. Um, all right, Greg, uh, do you have anything you want to add before we let you go? Um, no, not really. Uh, you know, I enjoyed doing this a lot, and I uh, hope we do more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Any anytime. Have you back. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. All right, guys. Well, this is Greg Horn, greghornart.com. Go and check it out. We did make a limited number. My phone will not stop buzzing, so I'm guessing you guys are finding these things. Um, Greg, I'm sure yours are, are, are doing well. Uh, but head over to our website. Uh, support the Facebook page. Make sure you're following uh, my guy here. Uh, of course, support Bird City Comics. Uh, make sure that you guys sub to the comic book food chain so we can keep doing these cool things and bringing people to you. And, uh, yeah, Greg, we're, we're going to let you go, and, and I'll give you a call as soon as we're done. Sound good? All right. Okay. Good seeing you, Aaron. Good seeing you, Frank. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, take care, man. Yeah, thank you for showing up. <laughs> for showing up. <laughs> that, that's how you let him go. We've never had a guest not show up. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> you know, do you have abandonment so, issues? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's get into that because I feel like I'm owed a half hour of airtime. <laughs> right. Man, I cooked. I cooked my noodles way too early because it wasn't that hot. So. Yeah, now when, when they get cold, they start to get stale and like the heat just disappears. Somebody I mean, I could feel the heat. increase like yeah. as I was going, but like, yeah, I should have made it for sure. look like this, like how I always look. <laughs> but I like spicy food, so I don't know. I, I See, it would have been funnier food. with me. I think that I need to eat the noodles because mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, I won't be able to handle it and it'll be hilarious just to watch me. All right, so we're going to sub an interview with your favorite attractive actress. And oh, then, my, my get out of jail free card? I mean, whoever you would like stumble over your words talking to to begin with, we're going to do it with that person. Okay. I, I got to get that approved through Laura. She needs to tell me who that is, and then I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> tell Laura that she looks like that person. will be fine. Ooh. There you go. Spider Gwen. Um, all right. Let's let's uh, let's get a little house cleaning here, guys. Um, if you guys have not seen the video, we've been posting. What are we calling this? Micro content? Is that the correct term? Uh, Offloading episode content. Uh, to tighten these uh, live episodes up a little bit, but uh, also to uh, get these picks out a little earlier so people can see them earlier. Hey, back and sale. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. She's kind of right, so that, but I like right. it. Um, but Aaron, Aaron was posting this video this morning, guys. The what we're eating, uh, we put some books on there, obviously, and, and kind of give you guys a, a quick, uh, a little taste of, of what we're eating this week. And you guys can go and check those out. So you're getting a little bit extra throughout the week of uh, the comic book food chain. Uh, we had some good picks on there. Yeah, and you're getting our picks early, so you can put them on your poll to grab them on Tuesday if you go pick up your DC books. On I Tuesday. still have your book right here, Frank, with your uh, Mighty Morphin books you wanted. Nice. Right here, waiting to go. Nice. So nice. We don't need to give more books. Well, you just need to give more books to me. That's right. I, I got you. Dude, if there's something I got around here, it's comic books. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Dan Barry says, I thank you for showing up. Should be Aaron's sign-off this week. <laughs> Do you say that at the end of dates? Or the beginning. Yes. I mean, if you <laughs> did or beginning. didn't, I wouldn't judge you. I'm just. I feel like I would say that because too. I don't remember when my last date was. Hi, my name is Aaron. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. And date over. Oh my goodness! All right, guys. Well, I think this is going to wrap it up. Um, let's see. Oh, let's get back into giveaways. We, we, we got giveaways still, guys. We're pushing. We got to the 800 mark finally, so we're going to make sure that book uh, gets given away. Uh, we're going to drop. Uh, here we go. So this next coming episode, if this is something you're interested in, uh, we're going to talk about comic books, uh, TV series. Uh, TV series is – that did not sound right. Frank, you talk now. I'll, I'll do this one. Uh, so next episode, we're going to talk about uh, the sort of the, the second wave rise of uh, comic book TV, your, your, your WandaVisions, your – Falcon and the Winter Soldiers, kind of like the the stuff after CW comic book TV, right? Like what, what's going on now? How's it affecting things? Um, we, we talked a little bit about this before we started recording tonight, and there's 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 a lot to talk about. Um, and we're gonna use uh, the uh, Bucky and Falcon finale to kind of segue into that. So we'll we'll be reviewing the the series, talking a little bit about uh, comic book TV from uh, you know the food chain perspectives. So yeah, yeah, tune in next week. Um, maybe we'll have some surprises for you next week too. That, that, that seemed to work out this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course we're pushing. We're trying to get. We're we're pushing our way there to the one thousand giveaway, guys. That's the big book so far. It's a Canto number one. It's a con exclusive, correct, Frank? On the next slide. <laughs> All right. No, it's not. I lied. Well, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> See, I wasn't sure. I want to, you know. 
so, I since think we're pulling the trigger through. now, if you guys aren't subscribed or following or following, I couldn't think of a, a third verb there. Uh, so it's follow twice and it's still pissing me off. But if you don't follow us on Instagram or, or Twitter, whichever is your poison, go do that. Hit the, the subscribe button and the little bell here on the screen right in front of you. It's really easy. Just click, click um, and help us get to 1,000 so we can on the next slide give away this book that is collecting dust. Uh, this is Canto number one. It is the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive from two years ago when the book debuted. Uh, it's my personal copy. It is signed by David and Drew, who are good buddies of mine. Uh, and I want it out of my house. It makes me jealous that I am not nearly as successful as David and Drew. Uh, so please get us to a thousand so I can get this thing in the mail. Stop staring at it. Yeah, that, that's gonna be tough, especially with something that you like and, and you're just staring at it every week going, I really want to give this away. It's not even that, man. It's like I have a measure of success and like it is it is X. And then David and Drew have this book that is so much better and so much more impressive than mine has just you know, it's X times Y and so so good. And it's just it makes me so green like every day. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. I'm super happy for them. Um, I'm really excited for Canto to be a cartoon and for David to, to write it. Um, and I'm excited to read uh, City of Giants. I haven't read it yet for my copy from you. But if you guys want this really sweet book, uh, I don't remember what these were limited to. I think maybe it was 250 uh, But they were super hard to get. They were sold out as hell at the show. I wouldn't have one if David and Drew didn't give it to me. Um, and I want to give it to you guys. So subscribe to the channel and we'll give it to you. So it looks like Greg popped back on. My apologies to at Frank Gogol. Cut him off a few times, but that's because I couldn't hear him. Kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that made, that made it all worth it. None of you got Greg Horn kisses. I got Greg Horn kisses. Which, wow. Boom. All right. And then one more time, guys, we release a, a secret cover uh, today. Make sure that you head over to birdcitycomics.com, greghornart.com. Pick up your copies. It's a very limited amount for tonight. Full launch will be tomorrow. If you're on my email list, you guys will see that. Uh, so make sure you do it. Anything else to add before we get out of here for tonight, guys? Man, I, I just want to hear you say Yeah, I just want to thank Ultra Max. I want to thank everyone for showing up. You know, Ultra, Leftover Zaggy, Dan Barry, Half Price Kirk in the house. You know, there's a bunch of people that keep on coming back. Laura supporting us since show number one. Dave yeah. Durr, always a pleasure to see you. I'm going to start calling them the real 800 because Ooh. Some, some people are unsub and just unforgivable. It's lame to unsub. I mean, it, it's one of those things. Have you guys seen that new app there? It tracks your subscriptions by your email so you know what you're paying monthly on subs that you forgot you had. So just be one of those guys, sub um, it, and forget it's there. Just leave yeah, it. This one's free too. Like, come on. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it costs right. you time, but. All right. I, I got to say this. I'm going to get it right this time. So, guys, for the uh, comic book food chain, uh, we will be back again next Tuesday. Watch out for everything that we post. And like Frank said, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, all the, all the uh, YouTube. social networks. YouTube. YouTube. That's, that, that's, that's that, you know, that one. But, yeah, guys, until then, stay hungry, y'all. <laughs>